My name is Steve Porter. I'm a senior consultant with Wintelect, and today we're going to talk about responding to browser resize and zoom events using Silverlight 2.0. In the example that we have open, we have a block of Silverlight content that we wanted to resize along with the browser. So as the browser resizes the browser up or down, we wanted that content to resize accordingly. We also wanted our content to zoom in, out, in and out along with any other content on the page. So as the browser changes the zoom level of their browser, our Silverlight content will adjust its size accordingly. This is pretty important when you have Silverlight content either embedded or beside other web content on a page. So as the browser resizes our zooms and that other web content changes size, we want our Silverlight content to adjust accordingly so everything stays in sync. Let's take a look at how we might do this. I have Visual Studio 2008 open with a blank solution. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a new Silverlight application project. We'll call this Silverlight application resize. And along with this, Visual Studio creates for us a website that we can use to test our Silverlight application. Now that we've got all of this generated for us, we need to go in and just clean up the files that we don't use. We're not going to use the default.aspx or the other generated ASPX. Today we're just going to use the HTML page, so we want to set that as a start page. Now let's move down to our Silverlight application and take a look at our page.xaml. What we want is a red block in the upper left hand corner of the page, and we want that to be a 300 by 300 block, so we're going to set the width and the height, both the to 300 and then we're going to set the horizontal alignment to left and the vertical alignment to top so that that block is in the upper left hand corner of the page. We also want to increase the size of our user control itself so that you can clearly see the content resizing and zooming. Okay so those are the only changes that we need to make to our XAML now let's save these changes and move on over to our code behind. Now in the code behind there's a couple of things we need to do. The first thing we need to do is add a using statement to bring in the system.windows.browser namespace. This namespace gives us all of the functionality we need to allow our Silverlight content to call JavaScript and interact with the HTML DOM as well as allow JavaScript to call our managed code. Since we're responding to browser resize events, that's what we're going to be doing today. We want to make sure that JavaScript can call our managed code. So the first thing we need to do is register our page object as callable from JavaScript. To do this, we register as a scriptable object, passing in a string, which is just a key that we use from JavaScript to reference our page, and then we pass in a reference to this or the page object. Now we want to write a method that returns nothing that we can use to adjust the size of our content. And it's going to accept a double for the width and a double for the height. Just for simplicity, we're going to call these variables w and h. Now, we're going to set the width and the height of our layout root to this passed in w and h. So we're going to set the width to w and the height to h. So that we can see these changes, we want to add a little bit of padding. So we're going to subtract 100 from each of these values so that we have a 100 pixel padding at the, on the uh, width and the height so we can see these changes so it's not pushed right up against the edges of our browser. The last thing that we need to do is add an attribute to our method that marks it as callable from JavaScript. To do this we add the scriptable member attribute. Let's save that and rebuild the solution. As long as everything builds successfully that's all we have to do to our code behind. Okay, so now we're done with our Silverlight. Let's move over to the HTML page. The first thing we need to do is give our Silverlight object an ID. 
So we're just going to call it Silverlight Control. We're going to use this ID to get a reference to the control from JavaScript. Now we're going to write a function to handle our on resize. This event will be accepting a sender object and event args as input. Now within this method, the first thing we want to do is get a reference to the Silverlight control. To do this, we just use document dot get element by ID, passing in the name of the Silverlight control. We're also going to create variables for the width and the height. Now to get this width and the height, we get a reference to the control. dot content and we're going to get the actual width and the actual height. The reason that we're using actual width and actual height is we need to get the actual width when zoomed and the actual height when zoomed. If we just use the width and the height we can't get the appropriate zoom levels. It will give us the same value that it would if it were not zoomed. Now the last thing we want to do here is again we want to get a reference to control dot content. Now we're going to use that string key that we set up before page and we're going to call adjust size which is our managed code method passing in the width and height. Now the last thing we need to do is hook the on resize event of our Silverlight content so that it calls the JavaScript on resize event that we just set up. So param name equals on resize and value equals on resize. Now that all of that is hooked up, we should be able to save. We're going to hit F5 to start our content. Yes, we want to modify the web config for debugging. Hit OK. And now we have a page that loads up with our Silverlight content in it that responds to our browser resizing as well as our browser zoom events.